Okay, welcome to part two of this video on doing an AC steady state analysis example um, on the circuit that you see behind you. In part one, we did the analysis for a frequency of 377. In part two, we will repeat this analysis for a frequency of 4000 and a frequency of 40. Uh, I'll go through this pretty quickly because the process is exactly the same as what we did in part one. It's just that the numbers will change as we change the frequency. So the first thing to do is identify omega. In this case, we see here that omega is 4000. And then we want to change every time domain voltage or current to a phasor. So we've created a phasor for the output voltage and a phasor for the input voltage. The next thing we want to do is find the equivalent impedance of the, of the uh, inductor and of the uh, capacitor. So the equivalent impedance of the inductor is going to be J times 4000, that's omega, times 70.4 times 10 to the minus third, that's the inductance. And when I work this out, I get, um, this is J, 281.6 ohms. And similarly, the impedance of the capacitor will be 1 over J, 4,000 times 100 times 10 to the minus 6. That's 100 microfarads. And this will be equal to minus J 2.5. Okay, so the equivalent impedance then of this whole chunk of the circuit I can get as is going to be uh, 0.1 ohms, that's this guy, plus J281.6 ohms, that's the impedance of the inductor, times minus J2.5 ohms, that's the impedance of the capacitor, divided by 0.1 ohm plus J 281.6 ohms minus J 2.5. Okay, and if I work this out with Wolfram Alpha, I get, okay, let's see, 0.1 ohm plus I times 281.6 times minus I 2.5 divided by 0.1 plus I 281.6 minus I 2.5. And that gives me an equivalent impedance of of um, 8 times 10 to the minus 6th ohms minus J 2.52 ohms. Okay, so I can go back to my circuit and I can replace this network by a box that has 8 times 10 to the minus 6 ohms minus J 2.52, whoops, 52 ohms. Okay, now I can just go ahead and get V out. V 
using a voltage divider, as we did in the previous video. And we have then V out is equal to, uh, let's see, 1 K ohm over 100 ohms plus 8 times 10 to the minus 6th ohms minus J 2.5 ohms plus 1 K ohm times 5 volts at an angle of 0. And if I work this out, I'll have 1,000 divided by 100 plus 0 0.000008 minus I2.52 plus 1,000 times 5. And this gives me then an output voltage of 4.55 at an angle of 0.13 degrees. So I go back to um, here and I basically see, you can say V out is 4.55 at an angle of 0.13 degrees. Okay. So the last step is to rewrite this as a time function. We have that V out of T is 4.55 volts cosine 4000 T plus 0.13 degrees. Okay. So you can see at this higher frequency, um, the network whose equivalent impedance uh, is in purple um, doesn't really change things much. Uh, basically, the output voltage is mostly due to the 100 ohm resistor and the 1k ohm resistor. Okay, so that was fun. Let's whip through the last example where we'll change omega to 40. And I'm going to go through this as fast as I can, assuming that you've already seen and internalized the steps. So the first thing to do is identify omega. Um, indicate that this is a phaser. Right, this guy is a phaser. The next thing to do is to find the equivalent impedances. And we have that the inductor is J2.81 ohms. We have that the capacitor is minus J 250 ohms. So we have then that the equivalent impedance of this whole block of stuff will be um, let's see 0.1 plus J 2.81 minus J 250 over the sum of these guys okay let's compute this Alpha is not going to like the J. It's clearly made by mathematicians and not engineers. And when I solve this, I get that um, this is going to be, or the equivalent impedance is point. 1 plus 2.83 J. Okay, so now, okay, so this will be um, 0.1 plus J 2.83. These are all ohms here. 
Okay, so the last thing to do then is to find out what V0 is. Again, we'll use a voltage divider. We have V0 will be 1K ohm over 100 ohms plus 0.1 plus J 2.83. That should be ohms, ohms plus 1k ohm times 5 at an angle of 0. And I work this out. And we get the following. 1,000 divided by 100 plus 0.1 plus I 2.83 plus 1,000 times 5. And when I work this guy out in, in polar form, I get 4.55 at an angle of minus 0.14 degrees. So going back to our, uh, our picture here, we have that this is 4.55 at an angle of minus 0.14 degrees. Okay, so the last step is to turn this back into a time function. And we have V0 of T is 4.55 volts cosine 40 T minus 0.14 degrees. And there we have it. So what we found is that if the uh, frequency is much different, well, significantly different than 377, uh, in this case at least a factor of 10 higher or a factor of 10 lower, then the output voltage is about 90% um, of the input voltage. However, when omega was uh, 377, we found that the output voltage was a little more than 10% of the input voltage. So what we have here is what's called a notch filter. I'll even write this out. This guy right here is a, well, that's too dark to see, a notch filter. And the idea is it gets rid of the 60 hertz uh, component of a signal and uh, leaves the other components, which is a very useful thing to do if you're doing instrumentation, because quite often you get a lot of 60 hertz noise in uh, sensor data. So that concludes this video. Thanks for watching.